Today is August 15th, Tuesday, and you are listening to the Daily AI Show. Welcome, 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 everybody. Sorry, I was getting a notification there right at the, at the top of the show. What's going on, Robert, Beth, Andy, Junmi? We almost got the whole crew here. I know Aaron couldn't make it, and Carl will be joining us for the first time. Uh, starting tomorrow and actually I'll be out so you guys will get to uh, get Carl all ready for all the amazing stuff we've been doing he's been out on vacation but he's ready to come back and join all the fun uh, first off I wanted to say thank you to anybody that's listening that helped us get to 150 followers on our LinkedIn page for the Daily A show because that has enabled us now to stream live directly to it so uh, we're growing. We're getting some uh, good responses from the uh, audience. People are loving the show, so uh, we're just going to keep we're going to keep doing this. So uh, today, guys, we're talking not all to about mention, Brian. That we had Rachel yeah. Woods posted on uh, her LinkedIn channel. Uh, uh, that, that we're the best. What would you say? The funnest new daily AI show. That's new. Yeah, that's new. That's new AI. AI. All these caveats, but you know, I feel like I'm a celebrity now. When Rachel Woods posts about you, you know, you know, you know, you made it to the show. True. <laughs> yeah. Rachel is uh, is definitely the um, the person that we sort of, uh, I will say, sort of look up to as far as, you know, putting out the content. Rachel Woods is the one along with her sister uh, who started the AI exchange. And Rachel has an amazing story and, and uh, we'll certainly get her on here at some time to tell it. But she just decided to start posting on on TikTok because she was interested about AI and the, you know, the incoming revolution and within days or a week or whatever like chat gpt drops dolly to dolly drop dolly do drops <laughs> you know like it just takes off and she had just started her thing so she it couldn't have been better timing and so she's been posting amazing content obviously on uh on tiktok for the last several months now i think i probably clued in around january and i was like oh i just want to read and and anything she's saying i want to absorb and then more of it then she she uh, created a Slack community as well as a website that you could join, and that's where we all met each other. So um, we and are just born out of that. And newsletter, yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, and the newsletter. Yeah, I forgot about that. Thank you. Yeah, I forgot. I kind of forgot about it. Was that that was before the Slack, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. It was the newsletter first. Then the then she talked about the Slack community, and and now we're over a thousand people in there. And uh, growing rapidly. In fact, I was, I'll tell you this, guys, I was, um, we just kicked off like what we would call the second cohort of the uh, boot camp. And um, I'm in there saying, because I'm, uh, I'm the leader for that particular course. So I'm in saying, welcome to everybody. And I got to tell you, it is super cool because like the majority of the people that I'm saying welcome to, Munich, Brussels, Paris, <laughs> Germany, I mean, just, international and then of course across the states as well but it's really really cool to see people be like this is what i'm building in brussels it's like what you know and they're like this is what i'm doing in munich right now you know so it's uh it's super cool that we see that it's not only a really great ai community that we all know and love but it's international which i think it's going to be super and on, okay on tiktok uh rachel has a hundred and fifty eight thousand followers She's the real deal. That's big. That's big. Yeah. yeah. She's the real deal. Her, her content is, is amazing. And, and uh, her giving us a shout out yesterday, I know lifted all of us uh, just a little bit more as we're getting uh, started on this journey. So I guess we should get to, it's four minutes in, right? We should get into what we're actually here to talk about today, which is uh, about basically AI and emails. And, and what does that mean? How are people using it? I think this is one of those use cases that a lot of people just assume and they're like, oh yeah, yeah maybe I'm, I'm dabbling in it. But I do think probably most people don't realize how impactful it can be with helping with emails and stuff. So love to just open it up to you guys. How are you using it? How are you using it currently? Um, tips and tricks. Let's just dive in. Who's hmm. diving? <laughs> I'm going to jump in to say this. So yeah. I have a lot of experience with automated email marketing campaigns mm -hmm. for e-commerce. And they're really proficient, those systems. And I and I struggle to understand, apart from what you could do to create a compelling little snippet of content and a title on the email, how AI might improve either the targeting or the efficacy of those messages that are being spit out through these campaigns 
conditionally based on what you know user responses and or actions have been on your website, et cetera. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take the role of the skeptic here. I don't see AI dramatically improving automated email marketing at this point, but prove me wrong here. Well, so so I, I will definitely agree with you, Andy, that the prior uh, uh, optimizations, workflow automations have been around for a while and the word AI was never brought up. Like there, HubSpot has a whole workflow automation that you can do and it's it's brilliant. This triggers that and this triggers that. It's, it's really useful for all of this lead gen and follow up and drip campaigns and all that kind of stuff where where ai comes into it is i guess what the purpose of today's talk is is the personal piece and it does take somebody who's a little bit more versed at zapier and make.com and others to get some integrations in there so if if you're savvy enough to take a uh, person a candidate a prospect however you want to say it and Instead of just doing the template email that you send to everybody, you can load that in with some content based on that person's profile. So uh, you could go out to LinkedIn, scout, you know, you could do some Zapier uh, uh, crawls to get information personally on them before sending them an automated email, right? So you can you can load the data from other APIs. Is what I'm trying to say. That that's where it can get a little bit personal, um, but in in of course, then you risk the that you made something was read wrong or something, but I, I haven't played around with it enough to be completely against your opinion, but I feel like those who are savvy enough have the ability to personalize the emails with those extra tools. Was, what, did well, you, what would you think? I, I, I'll push back against that. You don't actually need the extra tools. Um, I built out a use case um, that I think Beth, you've seen, where uh, I built it completely in the AI, uh, open AI playground, but you don't even need to do it there. In this particular use case, it was actually Rachel uh, Woods and um, I crafted a personalized email to her as an example. And all I did was pull in the information directly from her LinkedIn page. So in this particular example, we're talking about, hey, I'd like to get time with Rachel, right? I'd like to meet up with her because she, I want her to be my mentor or whatever. And so, Essentially, what we do is we pull in the stuff that's personalized about Rachel, what she's built in the past, where she's maybe studied, these kind of things. And it's literally just drag and copy. And then you feed that into like a chat GPT prompt. Um, and then you're getting a more personalized email. And so that email is coming back and saying things like, I really love what you did when you built at this particular company. And um, I, I would love to learn more about this or whatever the case is. Now, that's not necessarily sales. That's like a that's an outreach for like mentorship or whatever. But what you can do and what I have taught. So just quick background. I work for a sales consulting company called uh, Scaled. And so that's that's all we do. We do fractional leadership and we do um, we step in, in a lot of the cases, but we also build out massive automation sequences uh, we get into outreach we we do sales force probably you know at, i don't know at beth's level but we do sales force um and we do trainings there uh as well as things in different uh products like uh hubspot and other ones and what i've been training people to do my sdrs and aes that are uh my clients SDR. is going in say again sdr Means. Sales development representative and account executive. So your SDRs are the people who are essentially going to be your cold callers. Uh, that's not always the case because depending if it's a small sales company, they may have to run through the entire sales life cycle. Um, but you basically have lead gen. Then you have like nurturing the deal, right? You got somebody that's going from a cold to a warm lead. And so you have to get them all the way through the sales process. Actually, a, a product that we're building right now or a whatever is a series of workshops that answers this particular question. But specifically to the emails, what we're talking about today is learning how to make it be more personalized. And it doesn't necessarily need to. You can get personalized. Like if I want to write to the CEO of ThoughtSpot, I absolutely can do that. You would have to probably use, unless it's going back before 2021, I might want to go in and use a Bing chat. Uh, Rachel mentioned perplexity.ai, which uh, she's been saying she's had a lot of success with as far as like web enabled. But you could also use plugins like WebPilot. Uh, that are on the paid side of ChatGPT, just to be clear. But basically what I can do is I can go in and say, hey, uh, Sadish Nair, who is the, the the current CEO of ThoughtSpot, which is a BI analytics company, right? I've talked about them before. Um, I want to write a cold email outreach to Sadish. Well, I can 
use ChatGPT to go do that research and pull in past experiences that I want to craft into the email. But something even simpler, if you have access, if you are using a plugin or a perplexity or whatever, you can actually capitalize on tools like Lavender. Lavender is a tool that a lot of people are using right now for best practices for emails, talking about not being too long, being uh, optimized for mobile. Right. And well, I can actually I, I, go I, I, in. Pause you for a second, Brian. So, so we, yeah. I feel like we went two different directions. So we, we started off with uh, big scale automating emails. Now we're looking at one shot crafted emails. So I feel like we, we need to differentiate between the where you were just going. So sorry to interrupt you, but it feels like that is um, a use case that requires a different conversation because then that's going to be something that Google is 100% already going to be doing. Like if you're in a Google Gmail account and you're writing emails, they're going to be able to be like, uh, would you like me to finish this email for you based on the four on the four conversation individual, right? Um, yeah. Then there's the automation, which is you have to be able to be generic enough by scouring thousands of people. If you're seeing a thousand emails or a hundred emails, be able to automate the process of scouring their LinkedIn profile. So there's, I, I can see sure. potentially well, see, I, benefits. I, of both, I just want to pop in. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. One thing, we're sorry, but my my pushback to either one of those cases is. I know, I, I say since January, my e email box has been fluttered with all these personalized emails. I'm like, I mm -hmm. can see right through it and it's annoying. So J sure. Jimmy. So I, I just wanted to comment on on the one shot versus for, versus uh, massive scale. I think what we're, what you're talking about with the one shot is implementing uh, those AI tools that can then be automated and brought out to, to scale or there's sure. a or or the or the offerings there are that does the, the same thing i think mm -hmm. the big uh, uh the big value here is uh in personalization it's the deep personalization it's the um predictive behaviors the dynamic uh segmentation and things like that that your your either your big scale or your um your one-offs can uh, solutions can do for you. So I I think right now AI is at the point or where it's or the, its trajectory is to just improve upon what there is, right? Like I, we've all seen the personalized automated emails that hey say dear insert name here sure, yeah. insert content piece here and then they have five or six different templates, right? So what what we're looking at now it, for uh, the AI part of this, how it applies is now it's scouring their LinkedIn, scouring their web presence, taking all of those elements and building a specific email for that person at scale. And then because Correct. of their behavior, what they click on, what they go to, what we're seeing from, um, you know, what their buying behavior is and all of that, that's that then informs what what funnel they need to go to or you know which uh, uh, which company is going to to send them their next email now is it there right now I'm not sure I don't I don't have enough hands-on experience to to say that but I think that's what the end goal is is to be able to just make a fully personalized experience for each individual customer and I think so I'm gonna obviously jump in here uh, I'm gonna ahead. jump in here and uh, and say a couple things about Salesforce. Um, Salesforce has had the like news about your um, about like your your prospect or your account like you can mm -hmm. that's within Salesforce you can set sure. that up so that it's pulling news and that kind of stuff. Um, the other piece though uh, that needs to be said in this is personalization. You've alluded to it. Personalization is only as good as the data that you have, yeah, right? Exactly. And the strongest piece of that is being able to um, track that, right? And so Salesforce does that, HubSpot does that. Um, but the conversations that are happening now in Salesforce, because Salesforce, uh, Sales GBT is available, which is their sales cloud uh, GPT add-on, it's available to the higher end um, user uh, accounts right now. But the conversations that are happening in the Salesforce tech world is let's talk about data. Let's talk about the metadata that you've been collecting in your organization and mm -hmm. ways in which you can, you know, bring that up to par to what you're going to really need, because that's what all of these personalizations rely on. 
I think though, here's the thing. And I, I want to push back a little bit here because we're talking about large scale deployments and Jimmy, you kind of brought this up and yes, I know the information is in Salesforce, but I, I guess maybe it, here's my take on it just because of, of what I've been involved with, with, you know, ground level, you have to learn how to do this with human feedback loops built into it. If you want to scale anything up. So my take, my, if I was going to give somebody an action item on this, if there is a sales professional out there right now, who is like, how do I do this? I'd be like, go in the GP chat GPT, um, ask it to help you write a persona using lavender best practices, um, for this persona in this industry, in this region. So I want to know the persona is uh, a senior VP of sales in fintech in the Boston region that works in, in perhaps this type of industry. I may even give it a couple of examples of competitors. And then I'm going to say, help me write a four part email sequence based on this persona. That you can do without ever automating, go anything else. Right. Then I'm going right. to look and I'm going to start doing like revisions on that and try to get that down to a really good four or five part email sequence that I can put into outreach that I feel like really tailors it. If you get good at that, which isn't very hard and you can build prompts that have variables in them in order to use that, I don't know, 30 times a day if you wanted to, you could just keep copying and repasting it right back into a new feed in uh, ChatGPT and you would get new answers out of it. If you can get to that point and you feel confident, then I'm like, yeah, absolutely. What you guys are saying, start working on what this looks like at scale, bringing in the tools like Salesforce, bringing in uh, the metadata, bringing in all this other stuff. But I caution people to say this will not work if you try to eliminate the human from the as a feedback part of the system. And I know we all believe that. So I'm not saying anything to you guys that you don't agree with, but I do caution because to your point, Andy, what, or Robert, you're going to get these really not so personalized, but attempted personalized emails that miss the mark. And so I think it starts at the bottom. You get those skills, you build those skills, and it builds up from there because then you can scale, then you can automate, then you can go, like to your point, Jimmy, probably create some APIs that get that you know mass. So anyway, I'll, I'll stop there, but that's just sort well, of where I, you I know, am. I've done some cold emails and I've done some, because I've been in sales most 22 years and 12, 25 years. So my, my, I've done cold outreach. I've also done inbound, like people were inquired and I would you know respond. Those are much easier, right? You can, you can do a lot with that because they're going to read it with a lot less. Like if you miss mark on five things, you're still going to read it and still going to engage because they were the initial inquiry, right? Just inbound. But the the cold email, you know, I use LinkedIn to, to do some, um, because you can set the profile, the region, then you can do a messaging campaign, and it, it. And so, to your point, it's 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 really interesting that you you have to know that your persona that you're targeting is um, generic enough or broad enough that multiple people will will be able to fit within that box. Sure, um, for that for that outreach sequence, sure. Yeah, yeah. For, for that outreach sequence. So so where I'm where I'm really finding the challenging is I want to go at scale. And I think it goes back to data. If you have the, and every, lots of larger companies have more data and they have better ways of housing it, better ways of accessing it. So I think it's only going to get easier and easier to imitate a human. Um, and, and, and so that uh, if I'm doing a cold email, I'll send it to five people, all five people on this call. And each one of us will get a different email and it'll be better catered to our backgrounds, our personalities, our personas, like you said, that that I think is coming. But I wish it was here now, that personal touch that we mentioned in that I don't think it's there now because people are trying and it's like failing miserably because every email I see, like a couple of them come through like, oh, I looked at your profile. You make a great, you know, obviously the recruiters, most of them are recruiters, but they still miss it. You know, they're still just like, no, you're just reading my LinkedIn profile. And and I know you could, you could put a little, a few things in the profile to, to mess them up, you know, like change your title or change the letter of your title. Go ahead, Andy. You're on mute, Andy. I've been the recipient of uh, perfunctory, personalized, you know, outreaches in, in various messaging platforms now. So anytime we talk about email, you have to also add to it, okay, there's messaging within LinkedIn that's being used in a similar way. Mm -hmm. And then email. also... Yep. Let's also talk about texting, which is lumped together along with email in the TCPA, Telephone mm -hmm. Consumer Privacy Act, I believe, and GDPR rules around private privacy 
And so you have to be very sensitive to the idea of automation running afoul of the restrictions that are imposed on you in cold outreach, especially mm -hmm. like in the context of e-commerce, we can send emails for 18 months to anyone who's actually done a transaction on our website. Mm -hmm. But we can't just buy an email list and start sending that out. That's that's prohibited. Sure. So uh, I, I'm just a little nervous that too many people will find the tools too easy to use and they're, they're going to be operating at a small enough scale that the regulatory authorities are not going to address the growing volume of these personalized emails that are outreaches for sales or connection. And they're, they're under the radar, in effect, because they're not operating at huge scale and they're not a great target for the lawyers who are chasing the people who are violating those things. So anyway, it's right. complex play. Or it's more blacklist. You know, you don't want your domain blacklisted so that you're doing all this lovely yeah. crafted AI mm -hmm. persona and then you end up getting your, your domain blacklisted for spamming people, in essence. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and we're in the attention economy. I mean, we're talking about personalized emails and that kind of stuff, but you can also use AI to create, give ideas, like create this multi-prong attention kind of drip campaign. That's another way that AI can help with uh, create personalization experiences rather than going out and trying to find um, uh, but somebody's personalized experience with somebody else, right? Or mm -hmm. LinkedIn or like right. broad public. If you start creating um, things that are um, that are intriguing, that are enticing, that are that are valuable for people. And if you don't like to write, AI can write for you. If you don't like to do graphic design, graphic AI can do graphic design for you, right? Like you can supplement the places where you would be using someone else or uh, it's just not worth your time to try to put all of that together. AI can do that for you. And then your personalized emails are really personal. Or That's personalized point, I, video, you know? I mean, you can yeah. have uh, you can have ChatGPT take you all the way to the point of explaining exactly what should be in a personalized video. Damn near give you a script and a transcript you could you could read yeah. off of a teleprompter and then you could do a quick 30 second intro video, which I tell my clients to do all the time. Video is highly underutilized when it comes to outreach and stuff. Um, but there's ways to do it and have ChatGB definitely help you get there faster because nothing's worse than a cold blank email, you know, a, a word document with a blinking cursor on it. That's scary <laughs> as hell. You know, so getting people to go from uh something blank to something that's somewhat templated. And to your point, Beth, like where you then inject the human element, like, yeah, I agree with all you guys. Don't, if you're just going to blindly do it, you're no better than all the spam things that are out there. The only thing we're saying is now there's better, faster AI ways to perhaps make it. And it's still going to fail. It's still going so, to fail, especially when we talk about, you know, cold outreach, it's still going to suck. We know that. Um, so yeah, I just think, you have to bring the human into it. It's not going to replace you. You're not going right. to be able to send effectively or efficiently a thousand, uh, you know, highly personalized, well-tailored emails that Andy is going to open, you know, or I might open because that's really, really we, hard to are scale. We getting, at uh, point. Brian, yeah. you were breaking up a little bit. It was just me. Yeah. Um, I do want to, I do want to give a hot take quick. If I could, if, if the internet's still working for everybody. Um, uh, yours, my hot yours take is on mine a little bit, but it might be my side. Nope. Yeah. yeah. Roberts. Um, so am I still talking? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So I have a hot take. My hot take is this. Um, I don't think oh. emails are even remotely the right pathway for anything. There, I, I give you a list of 20 people. I know that they have more than a thousand emails that unopened in their email box. So it's, it's the wrong way. Right? It's, it's not too much. So I'm thinking it needs to be more test text, text messaging AI, but that's a whole nother thing. My hot take is emails are dead. Anyway. Go ahead. That's Agreed. Um, and he broke up a I little bit. I wholeheartedly <laughs> disagree with that, but go ahead. Beth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> emails are that. not dead. Oh, they're crap. Right. Emails are dead. <laughs> emails are not dead. No, it, <laughs> not it, in the long shot. I, I, so, so yeah. I barely, I barely read the emails from my own team because they have so many emails. Like it's like, and so you're trying to pitch me some email. I'm not even gonna read it. I can tell the first sentence that I didn't ask for your email, so you're dead. 
So I think LinkedIn and mail is a little bit more because the audience is a little more likely to read the email. But I have six different email accounts that I have to go each every day, a thousand emails. So no, I mean, from if I if they're trying to target me, they're lose, wasting their their bandwidth. <laughs> I, so I emails like are dead for Robert. Twenty twenty three when it comes out. What Sorry, was Jimmy? I, I was Sorry, just gonna. Jimmy? I, I want to see the stats for twenty twenty three because in the end of twenty twenty two, what I've seen is like the best, uh, you know, the best email opens is at thirty four percent. Is that a lot? Is that a yeah. high percentage? Is thirty four percent? Yes, it is. So with yeah. twenty twenty three being the the rise of AI, I want to see what that percentage is. If if it ticks up significantly. I, I think we've we've still got that path. If uh, if it stays the same or is even lower, then uh, that we <laughs> Robert might be right. <laughs> so Email, I, guys. I, I, think, I think it's interesting. Right. I think the video idea is interesting, Brian. Yeah, um, I like that. And I'm less likely to open <laughs> and it's like a message from someone I don't know that says, "Hey, Beth." Uh, I found you on LinkedIn. I have a personal video message for you, right? Like I'm more likely to open your email <laughs> than that. Yeah, that's, uh, we, this I is like getting into to, sales I, techniques and I'll, I'll, I'll pause on that because I, I can go down <laughs> a rabbit hole. Uh, what I will say is this, and by the way, we're at, well, of course we're at time. Um, what I'll say is though, we've been talking a lot about emails because I think it's the natural order to think about it in terms of prospecting a uh, cold, even lukewarm or whatever. Let's not forget though, I can take any one hour transcript from any discovery call. I can put it into Claude. I can immediately get the top points. Not only can I get the top points for the person that was on that discovery call, I can figure out what questions I missed that they raised that I was too busy going down this track and I missed. I can bring up all of those use cases. I can get it to write me an email that highlights the call talks about what the next action steps are, talks about the problems that I missed along the way and sends out a amazing summary email back to that client. And I can do it in about five minutes. Yeah, Tell me where else we can do that. That's right not now. prospecting though. That's yeah. not cold. Emails. I didn't say it was. I didn't say it was. Yeah, that's email that's be, be, be AI the for personalized email. Yeah. And that, that use of a, well, well, the whole call today has been mostly outbound whole and prospecting. So that's where I'm Yeah, no, with different use cases. Yeah, different, if it, that use case I would agree is very helpful, especially when you're not sure how to follow up with that call you just had. It's great to do that quick summary, bullet points. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, and even create a, a script like you said for a Loom video that you would send them. And say, hey, great talking to you. Absolutely. I'd love that. That's you're right. I 100 percent agree. That it is underrated and used. So, yeah. Listen, emails are like cockroaches they're going to survive the, the next nuclear <laughs> blast in my mind people have been predicting the death of email for 20 years or more and yet we still get them we still read newsletters yep robert my wife is like you she's got a thousand unread emails and so on and so forth in six different accounts and it drives me nuts because i don't like seeing the little numbers in there like clean that stuff out but uh, the reality is we still, in the, in the modern business world, we still use email predominantly to deal with, maybe not always it'll be future cold, but I still is the predominant method for me to interact with my clients on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, every single day, all day long in my job, that's what I have to do. And yes, slacks and things like that and, and texts, which I am... I hate, I try to not give anybody my, my phone because I don't want them to slack or text me, um, but... Yeah, I just think this is like, look, it, there's so many ways right now that AI can absolutely help the the modern uh, sales professional. But just in general, people get better at writing more concise, more succinct, more action oriented emails that people actually do want to read. And maybe that's where the problem is, right? Yeah. Final uh, point I don't know, I don't know. It's for it's both of you is uh, your you you both exemplify what you were saying in previous episodes. Whatever it is, whatever field it is, AI is just going to make you better at your job. And if you're bad at true, your job, true. it doesn't. <laughs> right? Exactly. If you give AI if you're, that, you you're bad at your you job. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're bad at your job, you probably make it easy anyway. I will say that it, it, it's just so many variables here. So, you know, the audience of, of who's receiving the email from a grandma to a two year old, a whole different, uh, you know, thought experiment we can do about on, on the recipient being. 
the different generational differences between what mediums they're using and what they respond to. And, and so that's a whole other argument because, you know, I've been in sales for a while. I've, I've, I've been the changing technologies over 25 years and seeing how things, how do you, how do you adapt, you know? You know what, it's interesting you use a cockroach because <laughs> it is. I hate cockroaches so bad. So it's funny. <laughs> yeah. It's a cockroach. All yeah, right, guys. Take I think away we have is, to... Go ahead, Beth. Go, ahead. go back and listen to what Brian said uh, about ways to use it like three minutes ago. Go back and listen to that again. <laughs> listen, I, I, I do this so it's like it's always top of mind for me. But I think, as always, this has been a good conversation. And look, this is what I love about this roundtable, right? We, we don't all agree with the best ways to do this. It's more about how we perceive AI making, you know, um, improvements in life. And, and honestly, in a lot of times we talk about how AI is probably going to make it worse first. <laughs> and then it's going to make it better <laughs> later because for it's every new in right. intervention, it's somebody's going to abuse the hell out of it. So, <laughs> all right, here we go. Thanks, everybody. Join us tomorrow. Howdy. All right, guys, we're out. Let's go.